The Union Aerospace Corporation is the largest corporate entity in existence. Originally focused on weapon and defense contracts, new ventures have expanded into biological research, space exploration, and other scientific endeavors. With unlimited funds and the ability to engage in research outside of moral and legal obligations, the UAC controls the most advanced technology ever conceived. Incoming transport detected. Mars approach, Dark Star with U07063 passing through 38000. Roger, Dark Star, descend to 2000, set speed, contact ground on 26972. Roger that tower. We have them on radar, sir. They'll be landing in a few moments. Excellent. See that Counselor Swan is sent directly to me. Yes, sir. Tower, Dark Star on final. We've got you, Dark Star. You are set for lockdown. Welcome back. I didn't want to come here. He left you no choice. True, but this is the last time. I'm tired of running damage control every time he makes a mess. Right. You're the control, and if that fails, I'm the damage. If that's what it takes, the Truger is going to start doing things our way. Whatever you say, Counselor. Welcome to Mars. All new arrivals need to check in at reception. If you're looking for someone to help you, just head to reception. I gotta process the cargo log. I can't talk with you now. Welcome to Mars City, Union Aerospace's I premier research facility. Here. To expedite your processing, please proceed directly to reception. Welcome to Mars, Marine. I'm gonna need you to step on one of those red squares on the floor for a bioscan. This'll only take a second. Okay, let me get this started. You're gonna need to hold still. Moving around only makes the test take longer. All right, bioscan looks good. You're cleared for entry. facility serves as the central hub for all scientific research, Attention. archaeological Director studies, Banks. and military Please report operations. to Central Administration. Goal number one at the UAC is the safety and well-being of all employees and guests. To help achieve this goal, we ask you to follow all UAC corporate procedures at all times. This includes restricting your movement to areas for which you have clearance. 
Always remain alert and aware of what you and others are doing. If you notice anything out of the ordinary or just have a simple question, find the nearest UAC security guard. They are here to help no matter how large or small. Welcome to Mars. First time? You can just leave your bag there. I'll have it sent up to your quarters. Okay, there's a few things we need to take care of first. This is your personal data assistant. You'll need this to access all secure areas. If you get clearance for any security zones, it'll download directly. It's important, so don't lose it. I see here that Sergeant Kelly has requested your immediate attention. Head directly to Marine Command. It's just that way. Follow the signs. is a smoke-free facility. Please smoke only in designated areas. Thank you for your cooperation. I'm here because there seems to be some very serious problems. Oh, really? Do I need to remind you of the groundbreaking work that we're doing here? No, but I've been authorized by the board to look at everything. The board authorized you? Hmm. The board doesn't know the first thing about science. All they want is something to make them more money, some product. Don't worry, they'll get their product. After how many accidents? Tell me, Dr. Petruger, why are so many workers spooked, complaining, requesting transfers off Mars? They simply can't handle life here. They're exhausted and overworked. If I had a larger, more competent staff and bigger budget, even these few accidents could have been avoided. I'm afraid you'll get nothing more until my report is filed with the board. I will need full access, Dr. Petruga, Delta included. I won't have any difficulties doing that, will I? Only if you get lost, Swan. Just stay out of my way. Amazing things will happen here soon. You just wait. Let's go. Listen, buddy, you don't have clearance for this area. Move along. I can't help you here. Head to Marine Command. They can help you. I don't think I've seen you before. You must be a replacement for one of the guys we lost. Thank <laughs> you. 
Another replacement, huh? Listen up, newbie. I'll give you some advice. Keep your eyes open and stay focused. Another newbie. Welcome to the worst assignment you'll ever have. Come back for a drink when you get some free time. Planetary bases. Mark's employers have threatened a countersuit, saying that Mixum creates inferior parts based on original mocks of designs. Senate majority leaders this morning. Trillion dollar spending plan. The plan includes cuts in funding for the lunar outpost and several planetary platforms. Accidents? Well, that's good. Is that what they're calling him now? So, tell me, just what the hell is happening over there? Beats me, man. Look, all I do is repair the converters when they blow, okay? That's it. Fine. But what's overloading them so much? I mean, how much damn power do they need? I wouldn't ask him if I was you, man. I heard Travis started poking around and he got transferred fast. Didn't even see him leave. Hell, no one saw him go. Was he one minute? Gone the next? Lucky bastard. I'm really trying to get this fixed quickly, so, uh, do you mind? If you can fix this, you can stay and help, but otherwise, get going. Why are you bothering me? Can't you see that I'm working? Marine Command is right around the corner. Why don't you go bother someone there? Listen, I'd love to talk, but I'm really busy. What? Do I look like a tour director, Leatherneck? Attention, Dr. Braddock, please report to Environment Management Office for You need Alpha. report to Sergeant Kelly ASAP. He's in Command HQ. Don't waste any more time. Go see the Sarge. Don't you have some orders you need to be following? I'm too busy to talk now. I'm trying to reconfigure this little guy. I can't talk now. Took your sweet time, Marine. Now. Here's the situation. Another member of the science team's gone missing. Since you're the ranking FNG, you get to find him. I want you to check out the old decommissioned comm facility. We heard he might be heading that way. The only way there is through the service passage under Mars City. I've programmed this sentry to guide you to the maintenance elevator. I hope you follow the sentry better than you've followed orders so far. We'll pick up some gear at the security checkpoint at the bottom of the elevator. Oh, and when you find him, just bring him back. Do not hurt him. Now move out. Attention UAC personnel. Interested in earning more credits? Volunteer at Delta Labs today. See your service branch director for more details. He said that he saw some strange creatures or something down in Delta. He said it wasn't human. cares about the quality of life of its employees. Please take advantage of our quality medical care services.
This is the audio log of maintenance technician Adam Bernache, dated November 10th, 2145. I fixed the couplings on the heat shields this morning with no problems. I did, however, have another odd experience while I was down there. Shortly after finishing the first coupling adjustment, I distinctly heard whispering. When I went to investigate the sounds, I found nothing. I checked the work logs, and I was the only person scheduled to be in that area today. That experience, coupled with the stories I've heard from some guys over in the Delta Labs, has me pretty freaked out. I'm really beginning to hate going down to the underground maintenance area. The people down there are a bit off, the mumbling, the weird looks. The whole place is just plain creepy. I'm always expecting someone to jump out at me. I've secured my tools and the busted modulator in the storage cabinet next to the maintenance elevator. Technicians should use cabinet code 396 to access them. End of log. Welcome to the dungeon, Marine. The most unexciting place on Mars. I'm gonna need you to grab some armor and secure your pistol before I can pass you through security. Okay, grab your gear. Now you're ready for combat. Let me do a radio test. Mars Sec radio check. Excellent. Good signal. Looks like you've been assigned the decommissioned comm facility. Just follow the main passage through the underground junction, then straight out. You'll have a quick evac. And what better way to see the Martian surface than to run across it? Okay, you're all set. Oh yeah, keep in mind, civilians are working down here. Don't get excited and shoot any. You don't have a lot of time, Marine. You need to move out. Oh, haven't seen anyone new down this way in quite some time. Welcome to the dungeon, brother. Enjoy your stay. You sure are curious, aren't you? Yeah, this is what I do all day. You sure are curious, aren't you? Hey! You're looking for the scientist, right? I'm not sure you want to find him. You see... Uh, uh, never mind. Don't listen to me. Never mind what I said. I shouldn't talk about it. Listen, Scotty. I've done this a million times. It's not that hard. Why don't you crawl your fat ass down here and do it yourself? Because I'm getting paid to make sure you do it. Just finish the coupling so we can continue. Buddy. Don't know if I can really help you with anything. I'm kind of busy here. Maybe you didn't hear me the first time, but I gotta keep my eye on this. If you want to crawl around in there, go ahead. If not, you can get out of here.
This is Grant Baston, your Environmental Services Supervisor. The date is October 19th. I've been hearing an alarming number of reports on some uh, unexplainable things. Being on another planet and working underground has always been a little spooky, so we always have the occasional report of strange things. But what is worrying me is the fact that the number of these reports are up by a lot. People are truly frightened. The rumors we're hearing about experiments from the Delta Complex are not helping. The power fluctuations aren't helping at all either. Having the lights flicker constantly and losing power for several minutes at a time is scaring everyone down here. I'm doing my best to keep people in track, but we're continually shorthanded. Someone's reporting in sick almost every day. I'll keep my director apprised of the situation and will continue to log reports as I get them. Guys, not keep any of these machines running? Yes, sir. It's just that the science team demands a lot out of these things. Enough excuses. Just do your job and get the science team what they need. Well, I'm doing everything, but I just can't explain some of the things that have been happening to the systems. It's weird. Just get it done. Make a habit of sneaking up on people? Everyone's already on edge down here with all the strange things that have been going on. The garage area is right through that door. Now stop bothering me. The equipment seems to be affected by something unseen. Sergeant Kelly, you need to double time it down there. Search your assigned area and haul your ass back to Mars City. Out. Must let me get this communication out. They have to be warned while there is still time. I can't let. I don't know what I've seen. You can't possibly understand or comprehend. The devil is real. I know. I built his cage. I'm getting abnormal readings here. This is bad. God. I can't hold these levels.
All you, this is Sergeant Kelly. We're under attack by an unknown enemy force. Fall back to Marine HQ to regroup. Say again, fall back to Marine HQ and await further orders. Report directly to Marine Headquarters and await further orders. This is the audio log of Frank Delahue, engineering manager assigned to power production dated October 18, 2145. The current operational status of the grid is 23% over nominal capacity. I've 
increased work shifts to 12 hours a day for all personnel to keep up with demand. The constant and increasing load from the Delta complex is causing havoc. We are going to start losing critical systems if we have to sustain these levels much longer. I request clearance to requisition parts from other departments in order to maintain our equipment. Okay, I don't know what is going on over in Delta, but I'm doing all I can down here. The constant demands are bad enough, but the rumors going around are making things a whole lot worse. And I gotta tell you, things don't get better soon. All hell is gonna break loose.
all units. This is Sergeant Kelly. We don't know what we're up against. Repeat, we have negative ID on the assailing force. They're mean at no means. They don't have a clear path back to HQ. Stock up on ammo, establish a stronghold, and keep them at bay. and set up a CP there. Out. Back to Marine HQ and await further orders. remaining Marine units. This is Sergeant Kelly. I am unable to reach Mars City from my current position. Move to Marine HQ to regroup and await further orders. still alive. I can't believe I found you. Something happened. I don't know what. It, it, it was like a shockwave. It, it passed through the entire base. People started changing. It was crazy. I, I was working up here on the vent shafts. I don't know how I survived. Go for help. Please. No way. I'm staying up here. It's the only safe place. You can't get me down. I'm staying here. Be careful. I don't know what's in there.
This is Mark Stanton, Manifest Controller, currently stationed at Mars City. I'm not sure who to send this to, so I decided to send it to quite a few people. If you're on the recipient list, please take a moment to review this report. It is quite important. I'm very concerned over the shipping procedures out here. I am the Manifest Controller, and as such, I need to be informed of everything coming in and out of Mars City. Someone here is subverting my position and preventing me from getting data on things being shipped. This is unacceptable. Not only could this reflect poorly on my upcoming review, but this is my job and I'm tired of being out of the loop. I have no idea who keeps telling the shipping crews to allow things in and out without allowing me to produce or procure the manifest, but whoever it is, it must stop. One of the dock workers actually told me to piss off when I tried to stop one of the last containers from going straight to Delta. I immediately filed a report and will follow up with the transit manager next time I see him. End of log. Specialist Wilson, my team is gone. They're all dead. I'm running blind here. What are my orders? Over. Specialist Wilson, this is Sergeant Kelly. Stay sharp, son. Move to your last known RP and fortify your position. You'll find you.
are these things? I don't know, but stay where you are. Don't let me. What was that? This is the audio log of Frank Delahue, engineering manager assigned to power production, dated October 24th, 2145. Reclamation problems continue to plague the main processor. Two more valve overloads on that unit in just the past week. These overloads can destroy the valves, causing very dangerous fire jetting with enough heat to incinerate sensitive equipment nearby. To date, we've had only one reported injury as a result of these valve failures, and this is due in large part to the quick response of the engineering team. Our procedure of entering the failure code 842 in the operation terminal has proved adequate, and I recommend no changes in that procedure. Audio report on troop morale. Morale here is beginning to drop. It's nothing to worry about yet since I keep my Marines sharp and ready to go, but events at the base are wearing on the troops. There have been a lot of things happening here on the base. I believe the UAC experiments being performed here must be the cause. Out here, they could be experimenting on God knows what. There are quite a few people missing, and no Marines, of course. It's the civilian population I am referring to. Bottom line, whatever it is they have going on here has my men on a razor's edge. At this point, there is no cause for alarm, but I am requesting we rotate squads every 90 days instead of every 180. I will continue to report as the situation develops. It is good we have the new Marines en route. Fresh faces will help. Sergeant Tyson, out. Audio report confirming new troop deployments for the Mars City Marine Facility, October 30th, 2145. The new troops will be arriving within a few days. 
I've started a series of training exercises focusing on close quarter small weapons combat, as well as instituting mandatory refresher courses on all munitions and weapons in our armory. In response to the large number of security breaches and general feelings of ill will around the base, I've doubled security details, placing two Marines at each checkpoint. This additional presence should help calm things down. I expect that the incoming Marines are not quite as green as the last deployment. They've turned out okay, but some combat experience will go a long way right now. Sergeant Tyson, out. you're still alive. I'm unable to return to Mars City. All passages out of the Delta Complex have been blocked. I'm setting up a command post here. I can monitor status reports of the entire base from Delta Central Authority and communicate with other Marine teams. It's your mission to link up with Bravo team and get that transmission sent. Head toward Alpha Labs. It's the fastest way to find them. I'll update your PDA security clearance from here. Good job, and good luck, Marine. any operational sentry bots, use them. Those guys pack a lot of firepower.
The UAC is here to help you. Psychological services are free and confidential. Gotta get to Bravo team quickly. They need all the firepower they can get. Sending that transmission is critical to our survival. I don't think you understand, Dr. Betruger. No, I understand everything. I'm telling you now, Doctor, the UAC is taking over this operation. Operation? Is that what you're calling it? The situation is out of control. It's not out of control, Swan. You are. I'll manage this, and you and your flunky will be taking control of nothing. Do you understand? Yes, Betruger. I think I do understand. Okay, plan B.
Welcome to the Alpha Labs. Formerly designated Phase 1 by the Union Aerospace Off-World Research Division, the Alpha Labs began construction on October 29, 2000. Don't stop, buddy. There's nothing you can do for me. They're all gone. <laughs> Surprised us. They just came out of nowhere. There's still a few squads operating. But they're all cut off from each other. Try to find them. denied.
green. Bravo team reports there's some sort of unidentified growth taking over parts of the base. I don't know what it is, but it can't be good. Stay sharp. the system somewhere else. All right, let's go. This is the audio log of Director William Banks, dated October 20th, 2145. It has come to my attention that we have an alarming number of missing personnel throughout the base. My office has received four additional reports from Delta in the last week alone, mentioning that personnel are not reporting for work and that calls to their quarters have gone unanswered. My office has sent the names of those personnel to Mars City Security, and they have promised to initiate an investigation. But this news is very disturbing, especially at a time when we have so many people in the infirmary suffering from sudden cases of schizophrenia and other psychological disorders. I hope there is no connection between those cases and these reports of missing personnel. This is the audio log of Director William Banks, dated October 5th, 2145. It has been brought to my attention by environmental services that the recent power grid changes have caused many non-critical systems to malfunction. The report explains that this is due to either intermittent power outages or lower than optimal voltage input. It also says that sufficient power distribution to all non-critical systems is becoming more difficult to maintain thanks to Dr. Vitruger and his so-called optimizations to the energy stores in and around the facility. I assured the director of ES that I would file a report with central authority over this.
This is Paul Simon, security specialist in IT. Our network security has been breached several times over the last few days. Now, it looks like it may have been going on longer than that, but whoever did this really knew what they were doing. They covered the tracks really well. I just happened to notice some log anomalies or it would still be going on. The intrusion came on an encrypted carrier signal from the Delta complex. They piggybacked the virus on one of the supercomputer requests and it peeled itself from the data stream once it was inside our firewall. Someone on the inside there has to be responsible. Unfortunately, due to security in that complex, I can only tell it came from within Delta. There's no way to identify which machine or even which lab it came from. Whoever was in our system had access to all personal data, including medical reports. My team will be monitoring the network closely in the next few days, looking for anything unusual. End of log. Marine, I've received a report that you haven't reached Bravo team yet. I need to pick up the pace. I can't wait for you. Reaching the communication facility quickly is imperative. UAC takes pride in its safety record. Please follow UAC procedures.
as humankind has lived under the looming specter of slowly dwindling natural resources. Our new ventures on planets like Mars have only intensified our need to find fresh sources for metals, petrochemicals, food, water, and For generations, humankind has lived under the looming specter of slowly dwindling natural resources. Our new ventures on planets like Mars have only intensified our need to find fresh sources for metals, petrochemicals, food, water, and even air. To meet that need, UAC researchers have developed dramatic solutions. Solutions that will soon pay off for the UAC, its investors, and indeed the entire human race. Mars itself is our chief ally and the key to our solution. Look around at its vast red deserts, rich in naturally occurring iron oxides. They are the raw materials of our future. We have developed a process that destabilizes the atomic structure of pulverized iron oxide and separates it into subatomic particles, which are then siphoned off to create new elements. Like alchemists of old, the elemental phase deconstructor allows us to transform red Martian soil into clean air, fresh water, and hydrogen fuel, the building blocks for a sustainable, human-friendly Martian environment. And this is only the beginning. With continued research, we envision creating ever more complex molecules, even organic matter itself. Atom by atom, the UAC is building an ever brighter future for humankind.
Audio log for Jack Smith, a benefits analyst in HR 1024-2145. I just went through another batch of accident reports from the science team. We've had five more people hurt this week while working with the equipment. The most serious incident was one John Hughes, whose hand was caught in one of the plastic extrusion systems. He was performing maintenance on it and states that he unplugged it and had the safety key in his pocket. It managed to activate without an apparent power source and uh, shredded his arm up to the elbow before someone got him out. It's been reported that the uh, machine is still running and we can't shut it down. The cost on that incident alone is enough to raise the red flag, but this is just one in a pile. Uh, we're going to overrun our budget on benefits payout this quarter. And while it's not my department, I have to assume that the new equipment budget is going to be blown out as well, because uh, according to these reports, the equipment's breaking down on a daily basis. Please mark this for review at corporate end of log. Gas leak stopped. Fire extinguished.
Startle me. Man, am I ever glad to see you. I thought it was all alone. It's been freaking spooky lately. The Hydrogon's blown a few circuits and is unstable. Be careful of that gun. A stray bullet into the glass shields could blow the whole area. I'm gonna try and get this thing stabilized. I'll head to the science office when I have this under control. If I don't get the Hydrogon operating within acceptable levels, it could blow. 
I need to stay here and see if I can get this thing running safely. Safer worlds for everyone. For centuries, people on Earth have waged war over two things vital to human existence, fuel and water. As part of its ongoing commitment to create safer worlds for everyone, the UAC recently unveiled its development of the Hydrocon. Though still in its prototype stages, the Hydrocon will, in one dramatic move, forever end all shortages of water and fuel. By splitting iron oxide molecules, the Hydrocon produces oxygen and hydrogen cheaply and safely without the need for large amounts of electricity. The hydrogen is then used for hydrogen fuel, a substance so versatile and clean that it can be used in everything from home appliances to today's most demanding rocket engines. A side benefit of producing this fuel is an endless supply of pure spring-like water that is more refined than any earthbound spring. We envision a world where technologies such as the Hydrocon can be used to end drought and civil strife in impoverished nations where water or fuel have ever been in short supply. While always at the forefront of scientific research and development, Union Aerospace hopes that the creation of the Hydrocon will continue to make safer worlds for everyone. Safer world for centuries. Still in its prototype stages, the Hydrocon will, in one dramatic move,
impoverished nations where water or fuel have ever been in short supply. While always at the forefront of science, the nation of the hypercars will continue to make safety work. anyone. I'm broadcasting on a very low frequency. If you can hear me, I'm not far. Please help me. I've locked myself in storage room C4. Please, if anyone can hear me, please help me. Audio report regarding the disrespectful treatment of new research staff, September 14th, 2145. As you know, I have gone to considerable effort to recruit my staff researchers for Alpha Labs. Finding team members with the qualifications, let alone the willingness to come to Mars, has not been a trivial task. You know this already. 
but it is necessary that I emphasize why their complaints must be taken seriously. We won't be able to keep our people or recruit new researchers if the harassment continues. No, harassment is exactly the right word. I'm routinely getting reports of UAC security asking inappropriate questions and submitting my staff to unnecessary background checks. I must insist that we be allowed to keep our personal lives private and be left to complete our assignments without further delays. If there is some kind of security threat, I suggest that UAC security look more deeply into their own staff. This is Andrew Chin, End. With an abundant production of hydrogen fuel, thanks to the Hydrocon, the specialist teams ask the big question. Can we get away to store and deliver that fuel to the dream of our space research or reality? The answer has been a resounding yes. Under the direction of Dr. Malcolm Batruga, the UAC scientists have made startling new discoveries in the field of Bravo team reports they've located your position but are unable to move to your current location. Head through engineering and try to link up with them in Sector 3. Since the dawn of the space age, Union Aerospace has been at the forefront of not only developing new technology, but pushing those developments to even more daring extremes. With an abundant production of hydrogen fuel, thanks to the Hydrocon, the specialist teams ask the big question, can we devise a way to store and deliver that fuel to make the dream of deep space research a reality? The answer has been a resounding yes. Under the direction of Dr. Malcolm Betruger, key UAC scientists have made startling new discoveries in the fields of quantum physics. And with them, they have been able to use the actual space between electrons and protons in a molecule as a storage medium for fuel in our interplanetary antimatter drives. Now, fuel that would once take up half the payload of an interplanetary ship only occupies a fraction of that space. You are looking at the Molecular Fuel Storage Compactor. The MFS compressor is yet another UAC marvel that brings the dream of reaching and colonizing the most distant planets closer to a reality. The UAC has long made safer worlds for everyone, and now they will bring those worlds even closer than you could ever imagine. Audio log for Walter Connors. 
The MFS compressor is producing fantastic results. The latest modification I made to the dilation matrix were the real key to the recent breakthrough. All in all, I feel my work on this project has been the catalyst that propelled everything forward. I've also taken a set amount of time each day to make sure that everyone is doing their job, and of course I check all of their data to ensure that no mistakes are made. This is going to be a huge moneymaker for the company, and quite honestly, without my input and hard work, I'm not sure that we would have gotten this far. I wanted also to thank you for your supervisory role in the project. Working with you is a true honor. Just remember me in the end of the year reports, as I'm certain I deserve a promotion. Uh, Walter out. I can help you. The lights are all out. I'll lead you through here if you can get me off this base. Come on, I can't wait. Electromagnetic pulses have knocked out the electrical systems in this area. Watch out. A big one could knock out our lights. We can't stop. We've got to keep moving. There's one.
This is Operations Coordinator Mark Lamia, dated November 1st, 2145. I'm filing this report because I am frustrated beyond belief by the level of incompetency I have to deal with here. I don't know where HR is getting the new employees, but the last five guys they've sent me were all a bunch of idiots. They can't get any of their work done on time. I constantly have to keep an eye on them. They work slow, they don't follow any of the standard operating procedures, and they can't even remember basic things that I tell them. For example, I changed the cabinet door codes here to 1, 2, 3 because I thought that was easy enough to remember, but they still forgot it. I don't understand why HR can't get me better people. I'm requesting full authority to hire and fire my own employees. It's the only way I can run my department smoothly. End of log. levels decreased 50%.
Toxic gas is cleared. Waste disposal area now safe for entry. Marine, you gotta pick up the pace. We have more men down. Bravo team is barely holding their own.
I was able to locate your position. Warcom systems are beginning to malfunction and shut down. Massive service disruption throughout the entire base. Uh, how long I'll be able to track you? Bravo team has just entered the end program. Pick up the pace. You aren't far behind. Thanks for getting me out of there. I got trapped in the chamber when the power went out. I don't know what's going on here. I don't understand why none of the systems are responding. I'm going to try to get an uplink into the main system from here. This is a secure terminal. I might be able to get a connection. I'm going to stay here. I can lock the door after you leave. I think I'll be safe. Security log number 3072 for Delta Security Chief Michael Abrams, November 15th, 2145. I've just come from the Armament Division where I was issued one of the new BFG 9000 series weapons. <laughs> While well, they weren't kidding about how much lighter it is over previous prototype models. Won't be so bad carrying this one around. <laughs> Anyhow, for a couple of weeks now, many of the security teams have not been following proper reporting procedures. Not sure if it's the format of the new SIR, so I'll make sure each team is scheduled by training division to get spun up on the new reports. There have been some security issues in the Alpha Labs. I sent a team over to investigate, and now I can't reach them on any comm channel. I guess I'll have to go over there myself. Well, I'm headed over there now. I'll finish the security port in full when I get back. Oh yeah, one more thing. I'm gonna leave this BFG locked in my office for now. Please have IT security change my door code to 901. Sure as hell don't need anyone messing around with it. Chief Abrams, end of log. In a quest to provide armies with a well-balanced set of weapons, the UAC looked to the past when designing and manufacturing the newest line of Mach 2 chain guns. The retro style and mechanical sturdiness of the chain gun is a must for all hardened combat veterans. Early adapters have nicknamed it Saw. With its armor-piercing 30 caliber bullets, the chain gun is capable of literally cutting opponents in two. Packed with all the punch you need in close combat fighting, the chain gun delivers unparalleled reliability and functionality. Always on the forefront of technology, the UAC is making safer worlds through superior firepower.
green. Base schematics show all passages out of your area blocked. The only way through is by traversing the EFR. Mechanical subsystem with two possible routes for it. Activating the system will get you a direct route, but it's dangerous. Extending the service bridges is safer, but the lighting systems are fried. Make a choice you make. Good luck. This is the audio log of plant manager Henry Nelson, dated October 24th, 2145. I don't know how I should report this, so I'll just talk about what I know and what I need. I've had quite a few employees reporting to me that they've heard strange sounds, like voices talking to them, calling them, even when they were alone. At first, I didn't believe them. The guys down here like to kid around, but they assured me they were serious. I ignored the stories at first, until one day, I heard something too. I was working on one of the lift-up service panels, and I distinctly heard the voice of someone saying, Over here. I quickly turned to see who was there, but the passage was completely empty. I looked around, but I didn't see another soul. I even checked the work logs, and no one else was working near that area. I don't want to sound crazy here, but my guys and myself are a little spooked, and some of the guys are even talking about ghosts. So, to make everyone, including myself, feel a little more comfortable, I'd like to request that a security team make a thorough check of the EFR area. Thank you. Henry Nelson.
take positions. Quiet. Did you hear that? This is Lane. Give me status. Always clear. There's nothing here, Sam. Go on. What the hell? Lead up. We'll get around later. temperature exceeding safe levels. Marine, the Bravo team is down. Their operational status is unknown. We're carrying a military transmission card. It's vital you retrieve that card as it contains encoded data needed to send the distress signal to the fleet. We're the last hope to get reinforcements. Find that card and find it fast. Rad, Chief Technical Officer for the NPRO facility. During my weekly inspection of the coolant system, I discovered yet another safety violation. As I've stated repeatedly, our service manuals must be followed to the letter. Now, this includes changing back filters for the coolant system on schedule and not when maintenance gets around to it. As you know, unclean back filters will create pressure inside the coolant system's release tubes. Even a minor disruption in a release tube can dislodge or destroy its coolant rod, overheating the core, and possibly sending the entire facility up in smoke. Now let me be clear, if I see this again, the team responsible will be transferred to sewage treatment before the day is over. Paul Rad, Chief Technical Officer for the NPRO facility. I appreciate UAC's concerns following the number of stress-related illnesses spreading throughout the base. However, I don't understand why we require such a large detail of armed security bots in NPRO. Now, you may disagree, but I trust my team's mental condition far more than whatever programming is running inside those bots. Which brings me to the reason for this report. Today, one of my best engineers, Patrick Thomas, was nearly shot when a bot refused his clearance. That's right, shot. 
Luckily, a nearby team from maintenance caught up to it and smashed it with a pipe wrench before it could chase Pat down. Now, it'll be days before he's ready to return to work, and I don't think you'll ever get him close to one of those bots again. Our jobs are difficult enough without needing to avoid getting shot. If we're going to be treated like prisoners, I respectfully request that you afford us the courtesy of being guarded by people instead of machines. Gas leak stopped. Fire extinguished. temperature exceeding safe levels. Operation temperature exceeding safe levels.
service bridge now operational. Audio log of weapon analyst Teresa Chazar, dated November 3rd, 2145. I'm pleased to report that the preliminary tests on the ammo storage in the new Mach 3 plasma gun has far exceeded our expectations. We realized a full 50% gain in the storage capacity of ammo packs as a result of utilizing techniques engineered in the Alpha Lab's molecular compactor. I believe with the ongoing compaction research, we will reach our goal of three times the plasma storage currently available in standard ammo packs. I would also like to mention that all of the employees here at the Enpro plant have been very helpful and quite eager to accommodate all of my requests. For security reasons, I've locked the plasma gun and the extra ammo in locker 063 with door code 972. End of lock. Celsius. Celsius.
5 degrees Celsius. Warning, reactor core temperature beyond acceptable levels. Marine, we gotta find that transmission card. If Swan gets his hands on it, I don't know what he'll do.
Steve Hammer, service technician. Since Private Swenson wigged out, shot up that drink machine, then lit himself up with a plasma gun, we've all been a bit nervous. All of us in maintenance knew he was losing it. Finally, when that darn drink machine wouldn't accept his credits, he lost it, started swearing up and down, and you had to laugh when that machine lit up, but before any of us could react, he fed himself enough plasma to power an office building. There wasn't enough head to clean up. Just vapor. It's a bad thing to happen to anyone. Anyway, I know with all the psych problems we've had lately, we need the additional security, but when the guards start going nuts, I don't know, all this extra weapons and ammunition, I mean, do we really need so much firepower laying around? Well, a couple of us decided to lock up all of the unsecured plasma rounds we could find. The code is 734. I think we'll all sleep a bit better tonight knowing it's locked up. Transmission card. 
We can't stay here. It isn't safe. We better move. to the communications facility as quickly as possible. We've got to get that message to the fleet.
is the audio log of controller James Holliday, dated September 24th, 2145. The recent transport issues from Site 3 have caused the board to call a formal inquiry. We'll study weight limits and suggest better ways to provide protection for Site 3 artifacts. Our equipment... Damn it. Yes, does anything work? Does it... Finish this later.
This is the audio log of Officer Ron Ridge, dated October 16, 2145. Recent transport tunnel accidents are causing major headaches for both supply and maintenance. Each accident causes an estimated one to three hour delay in what are mostly time sensitive shipments. It's becoming evident that certain junctions need safety adjustments as well as recommitment to driving safety by all personnel. The MPRO to Com Center route has shown the biggest increase in accidents over the past six months. Safety signs and approved lighting are needed throughout the main junctions over the stretch of tunnels and paths. Absolutely, no recreational vehicle passage should be allowed during peak hours. All personnel should use monorail travel whenever possible to keep cargo shipments flowing smoothly. Service lift called to station.
Service lift called to station.
Service lift called to station. Exit now accessible.
Marine. Are you at the communications facility yet? You gotta get that message to the fleet now. And watch out for Campbell and Swan. Those UAC suits don't give a damn about what happens to any of them. Get a move on. Communication system done. overload. Communications shut down. System computers are showing all off-base communication down. 
It's that fool Swan, is it? We're gonna have to find another way to send that message. Make your way to the satellite room and manually establish a link from there. Base schematics are showing the quickest way is through engineering. You can't fail, Marine. Get that message sent. This is the audio log of technician Seamus, dated October 16th, 2145. Our relatively new remote module replacement procedures are taking some time for maintenance technicians to adjust to. In the long run, it's a much safer, quicker, and easier method. Once a technician receives a call, he simply locates the problem module and gives a replacement command through the remote terminal located in the main comm block. This will initiate the replacement procedure as well as create a repair report, which notifies the repair team of an incoming module. Some minor repairs can be done on site with normal equipment. I'm hoping the new system will need less and less use once the source of the recent power fluctuations is located and solved. The system is built to handle most other things with its automated recovery systems.
Marine, I believe the source of the invasion was from the main portal here in Delta. After you send that transmission, get here as quickly as possible. This is the uh, audio log of Officer Ben Wolf, dated October 7th, 2145. <clears throat> Recent uh, unauthorized transmissions have been uncovered in the off-site redundant logs. These logs are usually not validated, but uh, an unscheduled audit has shown significant activity. More investigating will be done to get to the bottom of this matter. Particularly interesting are transmission blocks D4560 and uh, DE3288, which have no links to base systems. More to follow.
system shows Swan and Campbell are still in the area. Watch out for them. And get that transmission sent. established. Marine, you hear me? Back off from that console. Do not call for reinforcements. We don't know what the hell is going on here. And until we do, this area remains under UAC control. Cancel that transmission. Satellite connection established. Transmission terminated. We did the right thing. Until we know what's happening here, we need to keep ourselves sealed off from everyone else. The monorail entrance looks clear. Meet up with us there. We need to reach the Delta Complex and stop this. Green, you have just violated a direct order. Get your ass back to that console. Send that transmission.
control system failed. Toxins identified. Execute cleanup procedure. Welcome to the UAC Maintenance Department. This video will provide you with the necessary tools and information to do your job efficiently and safely. A safe worker is a happy worker, and your safety is our number one priority at UAC. Observe all signs and follow all procedures to keep you and your co-workers out of harm's way. Cleanup is one of the most important aspects of what we do in maintenance. This phase of our job keeps everyone safe. And research has shown that working in a clean and toxic-free environment has a positive benefit on overall productivity. Power generation on Mars produces two byproducts, steam and green goo. We vent the steam all over the base through vents, floor grates, cleverly placed pipes, and pretty much any place else. The goo is a result of the MFS process reacting with core elements in the Martian soil. It is not radioactive, but it is quite toxic. Remove all toxic spills at once. Hazmat suits are the best way to protect yourself when a spill occurs. And if you happen to come in contact with the goo, report immediately to a medical station for a scrub down. After a few days in confinement, you should be ready to report back to work. Report any rule violations to your immediate supervisor. And don't forget to read your employee handbook for additional rules and information. This is the audio log of Nicholas Sedgway, member of UAC Mars Hazmat Response Team, dated October 1st, 2145. We have concluded that the Martian atmosphere is wreaking havoc on the exhaust valve seals in the standard number five disposal drums. The engineers cannot explain the high level of contaminants in our internal atmosphere. The air scrubbers and filtration systems all seem to be operating at normal levels Yet a small layer of particulate is making it into the storage areas. That is what caused the lockdown yesterday. EAP Director Charles Hollis informs me that the personnel won't be harmed by these contaminants in the air, but we've seen that they do cause a corrosive reaction when introduced to the rubber compounds used in the storage systems. Effective immediately, all number five disposal drums must be locked away in at least a class two rated transport medium. Assessment ends. Station shut down.
making progress, are we? And in such a hurry to find us, to find me. There's no need to rush. I am everywhere, and everything here is mine. It's a pity you did not alert the fleet, but it is of no consequence. I'll alert them myself. They will come to the rescue and be consumed by my legion. We will use their ships to bring this hell to Earth. You won't live to see it. And you will die long before you have a chance to warn them. Attention.
defeated.
will not be your end. Your soul will burn in hell forever. Warning. Danger level. Red. Lethal toxicity level detected. Air scrubber one of three activated. Air scrubber two of three activated. Attention. Air filtration system online. Toxicity level decreasing. Torzu, Amiran, Inokas. <coughs> rise, rise, Quasmir Yalopan. There is no death for you. This is the audio log of Engineer Sam Harding, dated April 5th, 2145. I have just completed repairs on the magnetic locks and have significantly reprogrammed the pressure sensors on the monorail systems. My fellow engineers and I are confident that the accident of last week will never happen again. The accident should never have happened in the first place. The internal sensors led the computers to believe that there was a vacuum inside the vehicle. Unfortunately, the computer decided that the only way to fix this pressure discrepancy was to open all doors in an attempt to equalize pressure with the outside. And going over 15,000 lines of code today, I can see no reason for this tragic event to have occurred. But somehow, the logs show the discrepancy is clear as day. Honestly, this looks to me like another case of a solid system going to hell in a handbasket. I'm confident that the layers of protection I added to the code today will prevent any such occurrences from happening again. I'm off to meet engineer Jim Torben at the access doors to the Delta Complex platform to try and troubleshoot a faulty track sensor that's been causing the door to stick. Environmental Reprocessing Center. Next stop, Site 2. Who are you? What are you doing? I was waiting here on the train for my partner. He went to investigate what was going on, but he never came back. And now I don't, I don't know where he is. I don't know what the hell's going on, but I bet it has to do with those artifacts we were digging up at Site 2. I bet they're somehow connected with those things in the Delta Complex. The Delta Complex isn't safe. 
You're crazy if you're going there. First, please do not exit the vehicle without wearing proper Look, environmental protection. Look, I don't think this train is safe In either. Of an we don't stop, know what's ahead. Will be dispatched immediately for I'm your staying safety. on the train nice until we day. get to Delta. Then you're on your own. Now entering Site 2. Look, I don't think this train is safe either. We don't know what's ahead. Warning, airlock malfunction. Please contact engineering to facilitate repairs. Thank you, and have a nice day. I'm staying on the train until we get to Delta. Then you're on your own. Destroy all who oppose me. Engineering, please report to Site 2 access ramp. Airlock malfunction detected. Report to Site 2 access ramp. Airlock malfunction detected. This is the audio log of Charles Hollis, EAP Director, dated September 5th, 2145. 
In order to conserve current life support resources, effective October 1st, 2145, the Council has made a decision that all environment processors be brought offline in the general area of Site 2. Tomorrow, I will be sending out emails to all team leaders asking for an update on their asset relocation program to Site 3. We feel that we have unearthed enough useful material as it pertains to the project from Site 2 and choose to now devote resources in the exploration of Site 3. End log recording. This is the audio log of Charles Hollis, EAP Director, dated September 5th, 2145. In order to conserve current life support resources, effective October 1st, 2145, the Council has made a decision that all environment processors be brought offline in the general area of Site 2. Tomorrow, I will be sending out emails to all team leaders asking for an update on their asset relocation program to Site 3. We feel that we have unearthed enough useful material as it pertains to the project from Site 2 and choose to now devote resources in the exploration of Site 3. End log recording. Engineering, please report to Site 2 access ramp. Airlock malfunction detected. Engineering, please report to Site 2 access ramp. Airlock malfunction detected.
This is the audio log of Charles Hollis, EAP director, dated September 5th, 2145. In order to conserve current life support resources, effective October 1st, 2145, the Council has made a decision that all environment processors be brought offline in the general area of Site 2. Tomorrow, I will be sending out emails to all team leaders asking for an update on their asset relocation program to Site 3. We feel that we have unearthed enough useful material as it pertains to the project from Site 2 and choose to now devote resources in the exploration of Site 3. End log recording. Report to Site 2 access ramp. Airlock malfunction detected. Access ramp. Airlock malfunction detected. Security override enabled. Site 2. Next stop, Delta Complex.
engineering, please report to Delta Complex Access Ramp. Track sensor failure detected. Automated turret guns online. Warning. Automated turret guns online. Attention. Automated turret guns offline.
suspended. This is the audio log of Robert Price, Delta Operational Director in charge of personnel, recruitment, evaluation, and placement. Assignment of engineers to the lower Delta labs has become almost impossible. In six months, we've gone from a volunteer surplus to a critical deficiency of qualified personnel willing to accept assignment. Increases in both pay and benefits have done little to help this situation. Through exit interviews as well as the weekly Delta medical brief, it's become apparent to everyone that the rate of sudden and unexplained mental illness is way beyond acceptable levels, even for Mars. They're derogatorily being called sub-delts up here, and I have a feeling this attitude will spread to other parts of the UAC. End of log. Emergency this is the audio log of Robert Price, Delta Operational Director in charge of personnel, recruitment, evaluation, and placement. Disciplinary Action Report 40C-8, responding to Mars City Administration request. Delta Labs 1 is currently addressing a problem concerning theft of security equipment. Four members of the security detail assigned to the Delta Labs have been reprimanded with three others under investigation. It seems caches of weapons, armor, and ammo have been discovered in various places throughout the Delta Labs. We've located some of the missing equipment and have information that we hope will lead us to more. I have a team investigating storage room 21D with security code 298, where I've learned stolen items may be located. I hope to recover all items and find all personnel responsible. End of log. Systems down. Emergency power only. All Delta operations suspended. Emergency power only. All Delta operations suspended. Emergency power only. All Delta operations suspended.
emergency power only. All Delta operations suspended. Requested. Thank <laughs> you. 
Your friends are with me now. Soon.
attention. Reactor core online.
this mortal.
progress, Marine. Your journey is futile. You will die. And your soul will die. Be mine. Your soul. stabilizer on the portal just failed after Petruger took the device. It, it was an artifact we had found in the ruins. He took it into the portal, and hell followed him out. You have to help me first. I'm going to try to get the teleporter systems running again. The areas are destroyed around us, so it's the only way through this part of the complex. You need to find me a working plasma inducer. It's all I need to get the teleporter working. You can look for it in operations. I have a security clearance. I'll unlock some doors for you. There. We don't have a lot of time. Please hurry. This is the audio log of medical supervisor Peter Raleigh, dated October 29th, 2145. We have exhausted all known forms of drug treatment in hopes of finding a way to abate this strange outbreak of dementia, and I have yet to receive any additional data from the psychiatrists back on Earth. Options are quickly dwindling. Approximately 80% of all extraplanar participants exhibit signs of mild neuroses within the first 48 hours after returning from their expeditions. Within 72 hours, 75% of patients exhibit extreme signs of paranoid delusion and violence. We have isolated these cases in hopes of finding the pathogen. As yet, we can find no biological contaminants that would lead to such drastic changes in cognitive processing. It seems that whatever this pathogen is, it attacks higher brain functions and only leaves more basal functions in the lower brain stem. We've witnessed that a high percentage of subjects lose ability for rational thought and communication skills, and then the physical changes become evident. Subjects in this group appear to atrophy. Skin pales, muscles become slack, bone, teeth, and fingernails become almost translucent, veiny sinews of their former selves. I have never seen anything like this in my career. Our observations continue. This is the audio log of medical supervisor Peter Raleigh, dated November 1st, 2145. Patient 0432, a private Steve Jensen of the UAC Darklight Armor Corps Division, expired today at 1543 of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. This is approximately 110 hours after his return from expeditionary missions. Private Jensen was suffering from paranoid delusions and full-blown dementia. Treatment was unsuccessful. He was the last surviving member of his outfit. Four other squad mates, who also came back with Private Jensen, expired from injuries suffered on that last mission shortly after their return. Before his death, Private Jensen was heard screaming in both English and other languages, something about demon hordes feasting on our souls. The other language was later discovered to be Aramaic. 
Due to security concerns in the area, I've secured some armaments within my office. Decontamination process started. Decontamination complete. Have a nice day. Decontamination process started. Decontamination complete. Have a nice day. Decontamination process started. Decontamination complete. Have a nice day. Decontamination process started. Decontamination complete. Have a nice day.
As requested, the following is my initial feedback on my first trip through the portal. Private First Class Frank Cinder stated October 15th, 2145. I, uh, I don't know exactly where to begin. Obviously, I survived the first trip and feel no worse for the wear. I, I'm not feeling any of the symptoms reported by the others who have gone in before me, but I'm at a point where I'm still trying to process everything. Thankfully, the place looks deserted and devoid of any life, but uh, the flames and heat and stench of the place, it, it smells of death, decay, and burnt flesh. Tomorrow, we're going back in with some of the eggheads, um, science division, to start securing forward positions, and we expect to start sending out the mapping droids at the same time. Well, I must admit on a personal note that I, I've, I've got a really, really bad feeling about this. I don't understand what we're doing there or, or, or what we hope to prove. PFC Cinders, signing off. Medical report 16-8, dated November 2nd, 1945. 0432, applied to Private Jensen was suffering from paranoid delusions and... Initial psychiatric interviews suggested only mild psychosis.
Decontamination process started. Decontamination complete. Have a nice day. Report 16-8. systems deactivated.
Audio log for Phil Wilson, medical technician, Delta Labs, October 20th, 2145. Today I witnessed the third test of the teleporter in the three weeks that I've been here. Volunteers are becoming harder and harder to come by, and it isn't difficult to see why. They all come back screaming like loons about demons, pools of blood. It's real fire and brimstone stuff. At first I wasn't paying much attention, just doing my job, but... The last was Robert Clayton. Now, I met him my first day here. This guy chews up rocks and spits out gravel. He's tough as they come. Having to sedate him and drag his drooling body to the isolation room, it's really freaked me out. I'm gonna put in for a transfer as soon as I'm able. As requested, the following is my initial feedback on my first trip through the portal. Private First Class Frank Cinders, dated October 15th, 2145. I, uh, I don't know exactly where to begin. Obviously, I survived the first trip and feel no worse for the wear. I, I'm not feeling any of the symptoms reported by the others who have gone in before me, but I'm at a point where I'm still trying to process everything. Thankfully, the place looks deserted and devoid of any life, but, uh, the flames and heat and stench of the place, it, it smells of death, decay, and burnt flesh. Tomorrow, we're going back in with some of the eggheads, um, science division, to start securing forward positions, and we expect to start sending out the mapping droids at the same time. Well, I must admit on a personal note that I, I've, I've got a really, really bad feeling about this. I don't understand what we're doing there or, or, or what we hope to prove. PFC Cinders, signing off.
but you don't have much time. You're going to need to teleport across the containment chamber. It's the only way through this part of the complex. Head into the chamber and initiate the sequence on the machine. I'll take care of the rest. I'm not going with you. Good luck. But before you go, I want you to take something. It's a journal I made about the experiments. Those things. It's all there. It'll explain everything. Get it to someone so this never happens again. My name is Ian McCormick. I'm a research specialist stationed on Mars, working for the UAC. My primary job is, or rather was, to assist Dr. Malcolm Petruger in a variety of experiments, though for the past year we've been focusing almost exclusively on teleportation. I don't know if I'll make it out of here alive, so I'm recording this video log to let someone know what happened. And with that knowledge, prevent it from happening again. Initially, the teleportation experiments were amazing. We're creating a new science. The prospects of it changing our way of life were, well, they were outstanding. I was proud to be associated with such an amazing project and someone as talented as Dr. Petruger. We noticed early on, well, probably before we had completed maybe a dozen successful tests, that there was a variable delay during the teleportation. The objects are broken down at the quantum level, transported, and then assembled. Each stage of the process should have been instantaneous, but it, it wasn't, and we didn't know why. We sent a video drone through and were shocked at the images sent back. Just a few frames of video right before the drone came back through showed what appeared to be several sets of eyes looking directly at the room. We had just found a living, breathing creature that was not human. But Truger immediately sent out a request for volunteers. He specifically wanted UAC security force members because he wanted to capture one of these creatures. I've made a lot of mistakes, but I am most ashamed of my involvement during the next phase. To get medical clearance to send human subjects through the device, I, I doctored up several of our reports to indicate that we had performed living tissue experiments. I did not regret it at the time, but a few days later when our third test subject came back, he was chewing off his own fingers. It seemed he was clinically insane. We started sending teams in about once every two days. The teams were reporting nightmarish experiences, sightings of things that ultimately made us conclude that the other dimension was not just another dimension. It was hell. The creatures were bringing back demons. And then Petruger, he went through the portal himself. I, I don't know what he was thinking. It was an unscheduled trip, and he just went, and we couldn't stop him. And when he came back, he had changed. He sounded and looked the same, but he had just... I, I don't know what he was, he was just different. And then he did the unthinkable. He took the soul cube, the device that was discovered in the ruins, into the portal. The portal stabilizers just started to fail. And then... Living hell erupted into the base. Oh, we were stupid for not destroying the portals as soon as we realized what was on the other side. Oh God, forgive me. I blame myself for my part in this. Please, someone, never let this happen again. I'm sorry, Ian McCormick. Decontamination process started. Decontamination complete. Have a nice day. Systems activated. Teleportation will commence in T minus three, two, one.
Ah, you surprised me. I'm glad to see you. I would have hoped they would have sent more than just one guy, though. I've been studying one of the specimens we brought back to see if there's something physiological that would be a weakness, a way to stop them. I've found nothing so far. Haven't had enough time. I'm gonna stay here and keep looking. It's the only thing I can do. There are combat supplies in the storage cabinet in the next room. The code is 624. I hope you can use it. I'm gonna stay here and keep working. I'll upload my findings into the database. Delta Complex Stasis Chambers. This facility was constructed to house and study the extra-dimensional beings, which were recovered during some of the first teleporter tests originating from Delta Level 3. While little is known about their native environment, the specimens appear to be carbon-based life forms with extremely high heat tolerances. The epidermal tissue is extremely resilient to abrasion or incision, which has complicated internal studies. Observational studies have shown incredible strength and agility, as well as the ability for some specimens to manifest and control cohesive plasma masses. The method by which these plasma masses are created is yet unknown. It is believed that the specimens possess a rudimentary intelligence and social structure, as was demonstrated during the first tragic expeditions through the portal. While the cost in human life has been great in acquiring these specimens, we hope to one day complete genomic mapping and begin to answer the many questions we have about these entities. Thank you. 
Welcome to the Delta Complex Stasis Chambers. This facility was constructed to house and study the extra-dimensional beings, which were recovered during some of the first teleporter tests originating from Delta Level 3. While little is known about their native environment, the specimens appear to be carbon-based life forms with extremely high heat tolerances. The epidermal tissue is extremely resilient to abrasion or incision, which has complicated internal studies. Observational studies have shown incredible strength and agility, as well as the ability for some specimens to manifest and control cohesive plasma masses. The method by which these plasma masses are created is yet unknown. It is believed that the specimens possess a rudimentary intelligence and social structure, as was demonstrated during the first tragic expeditions through the portal. While the cost in human life has been great in acquiring these specimens, we hope to one day complete genomic mapping and begin to answer the many questions we have about these entities. Welcome to the Delta Complex Stasis Chamber. a relic codenamed U-1, or simply Soul U. It was discovered in 2104, located in a geographic region where UAC researchers have unearthed evidence of a long-lost civilization. We know nothing about this civilization. Uh, this is the audio log of research director Larry Bullman, October 19th, 2145. I've been examining the glyphs on the cube-shaped artifact, which some are calling the Soul Cube, and combined with previous research data, it is my conclusion the device is some sort of weapon. Uh, if the power fluctuations would stop long enough for me to get the linguistic CPU online, then I am sure my theory would be verified. You know, I'll take this opportunity to lodge yet another complaint about the continual power problems. Living in this godforsaken base is bad enough without having to watch the lights flicker constantly. It's just... Well, never mind. Back to the task at hand. What I've deciphered so far is a bit, I must say, disturbing. It seems that when one has possession of the artifact, if one inflicts damage or possibly kills another being, it extracts power from that event somehow. Now, once a certain threshold has been reached, the artifact has the ability to kill anything you attack with it. How you attack with it, I'm frankly not certain, indicating that the artifact is autonomous in some way. To date, I have only deciphered about mm, two-thirds, give or take, of the markings, but my initial glance at the rest of them indicates it harbors some far greater power. As you know, at this time, we have not seen any reaction from the cube, and it has withstood any scanning, abrasion, or other test beyond picking it up and examining it. I suspect that just like the civilization that constructed it, its capabilities are diminished to the point of being useful only as a paperweight. End of lock. What you see before you is a relic codenamed U-1, or simply Soul Cube. It was discovered in 2104, located in a geographic region where UAC researchers have unearthed evidence of a long-lost civilization. We know nothing of this civilization other than they existed, and that they were all wiped out in some type of cataclysmic event, according to what we've been able to decode from stone tablets found throughout the ruins. What clues we have been able to piece together reveal a culturally advanced society whose technology can only be described as mystic, as evidenced by Yuan's strange characteristics. 
Efforts to further examine U1 have been futile. Mass spectrometer and radiation scanning methods have failed to provide reliable identification of the molecular makeup of this artifact. The object cannot be weighed, and in all tests, we've been unable to determine its mass. All attempts to physically manipulate or open the artifact have been met with no success. We also have had no success in deciphering the symbols adorning U1. What we do know is that the thermographic readings are constant, unwavering temperature of 98.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Our research continues, and we hope that with continued investment and research, we can, one day soon, learn to exploit the technologies that make up U1. What you see before you is a relic codenamed U1, or simply Soul. It was discovered in 2104, located in a geographic region where UAC researchers have unearthed evidence of a long lost civilization. We know nothing of this civilization other than they existed, and that they were all wiped out in some type of cataclysmic event, according to what we've been able to decode from stone tablets found throughout the ruins. What clues we have been able I have the soul cube in hell, and you will never find it. Access granted.
destroy him. This is the audio log of Administrative Assistant Han Lee, dated October 16, 2145. Why is it that I keep getting the crummy jobs? Armor Corps 1st Platoon and 1st Science Team were completely wiped out this morning on their second excursion. And I am the one charged with writing up the reports and sending this information back to Earth next of kin. <sighs> so here I am. First cup of coffee for the day. Five hours of sleep the night before, no shower, and I have 20 dead bodies to fill out paperwork on. I haven't seen the actual corpses, but word coming down from the grapevine says that it looks like they have been hacked up pretty good. This says everyone on the base spooked. A Truger is nowhere to be found, and there are a lot of questions being asked with no answers from anyone. Last I heard, they were suiting up the next outfit with the new BFGs. Sounds like they weren't taking any chances on this next trip with them packing that kind of firepower. This is the audio log of Administrative Assistant Han Li, dated October 20th, 2145. Just when I thought this job couldn't get much worse, it did. Delta scientists sent another group of researchers through the portal two days ago and they failed to return at their scheduled time. Radio transmissions to the research body have gone unanswered. Even our LZ tracking systems can't find them. We fear that they are dead. Losing lives is one thing, but losing our proprietary technologies is another. The team was equipped with the newest BFG weaponry. We fear those guns may have fallen into the hands of those that killed them. We don't know who or what is behind that portal, but until we find out where our guns are, I'm suggesting we suspend operations to the portal. Thank you. End of log. Decontamination chamber sequence initiated. Decontamination process started. Decontamination complete. Have a nice day.
Please select teleport destination. Selected. Decontamination process started. Decontamination complete. Have a nice day. My patience with you is wearing thin. Granted.
Warning. Chamber malfunction. Please select teleport destination. Decontamination chamber sequence initiated.
Decontamination process started. Primary system failure. System shutdown. Backup systems online. Stop him! Maintenance personnel needed in chamber three. Selected. Decontamination chamber sequence initiated. Decontamination process started. Decontamination complete. Have a nice day. Pad 2 selected. Decontamination process started. Decontamination complete. Have a Selected. Three, selected.
Pad 1 selected. Making progress, Marine? Your journey is futile. You will die, and your soul will be mine. <laughs> Trapped in hell forever.
death will not be your end. Your soul will burn in hell forever. This is the audio log of research specialist Simon Garlic, dated August 8, 2145. It seems that I have misplaced the rest of the science team. I don't know how it happened. This place, well, I don't know what this place has done with them. One moment there, I'm taking samples, and the next thing I know, I, I, I turn around and everyone is gone. There, one second, turn around, and they're gone. I can't raise anyone on the comlinks, and the only signs of the team I can find are tools and other personal effects that seem to be left behind. Almost as if they had stopped working midway through running experiments. This place does funny things with your eyes and your perception of time. Um, hopefully, I just went into the next sector and are waiting for me to catch up. I'm going off to find them now. This is Simon Garlic, signing off. This is the audio log of research specialist Simon Garlic, dated August 10th, 2145. It's been two days now since I've seen any other team members. I don't know how I've survived this long, or how I got away. They were just, uh, torn apart. Um, they could only be described as demons. I have never seen such a big thing move so quickly. Oh, dear God, what has happened to us? The teeth. Well, that's the last thing I remember seeing. Teeth. The sounds. Words cannot describe. I'm sure it's just a matter of time before they find me again. I'm convinced they are toying with me, allowing me to stay two steps ahead of them. I, I can see them in the shadows sometimes. Why do they taunt me? I'm not sure how much longer I, 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 I can... I'm shooting at shadows here. And every moment, I feel them creeping closer toward me. 
Oh God. Oh God, we should never have.
every step you take. Your soul moves closer to me.
you know us as the Soul Cube. Free us from our eternal prison, and we will help you. Vanquish our enemies, and we grow stronger. Listen for our call, and then free us to smite down the evil. Bring this hell to Earth! 